Eco Money on Money FM 89.3. You're listening to Eco Money on Money FM 89.3 with me, Rachel Kelly. Now, the Sustainable Finance Institute Asia has just announced the appointment of environmental, social, and governance data and technology solutions company Stacks ESGpedia as the official ESG platform partner for the single access point for ESG data safe initiative. What is that? Well, the SAFE initiative is a regional approach to tackling the issue of ESG data, bringing together key stakeholders, including governments, regulators, standard setters, financial institutions, corporates and SMEs towards championing data and disclosures for ASEAN and beyond. To find out more about the freshly inked partnership, we're joined now by Benjamin So, who's the founder and managing director of Stax ESGpedia. Benjamin, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us today. Hey, Richard. Thanks, thanks. Thanks for having me. Hey, good to be chatting with you again. So let's start off with this news. Sustainable Finance Institute Asia, it's announced the appointment of Stax ESGpedia as the official ESG platform partner for the SAFE initiative. Now, before we get into that announcement, I want to start off by just finding out from you a little bit more about what ESGpedia actually does. Thanks, Richard. You know, ESGpedia, as the name suggests, hopes to be a Wikipedia or encyclopedia of ESG data. You know, so everybody uses Wikipedia, it's very useful. However, when it comes to the world of ESG data, maybe a lot of data today is still currently lacking. So I think what ESGpedia hopes to do beyond just being a directory, we also have an extended service to also help companies produce their ESG profile. So that's where we get into the business of helping them with their GHG emissions calculation, their ESG data reporting, and eventually creating enough data sets that will eventually become their ESG profile that you know other people could consume. Could you share with us some examples of what that might look like for a company? Mm. So everything is hosted on the site or how does it work? So, you know, all companies today actually have some operational data, uh, just that most of the time they do not understand the requirements of ESG. So what we have done is that essentially we are able to receive the data that they already have. You know, this could be their energy consumption, their fuel consumption in terms of the environmental uh, impact. So we can then therefore calculate their carbon emissions of course, it goes m- way more than that, you know, including their operations, their procurement and their employee commute and business travel, etc. and etc. So we are able to compile all of this data into a proper carbon emissions report. Of course, when it comes to ESG, beyond the E component, that could also be social and governance uh, matrices. So that's where we are also able to interact with their, you know, for example, their HR data, their hiring data, their employee employment makeup. Okay, and bring that into a E and SNG proper standard format, aligned with the international standards to produce the reports that they can use. So what does this mean then under this new collaboration? How will hmm. it work? The announcement that's just been made, what will you be doing? So collaboration between us, ESGpedia, and the Sustainability Finance Institute Asia or SFIA is aimed at driving you know, more data transparency and uh, standardization across the ASEAN region. You know, because the SFIA is actually a top leader in sustainable finance in the ASEAN markets today. Uh, they have been instrumental in delivering the ASEAN taxonomy in Southeast Asia. So therefore, you know, working with these leaders, uh, we will therefore be able to help to streamline this ESG reporting in the region and also you know, drive more adoption when it becomes more standardized where a Singaporean company, for example, with operations in Malaysia and Indonesia could now have a more streamlined way to report across the company, across different markets. That's it, right? Because for some companies, it can be a real challenge, especially say, for example, if you're in the um, residential or, the, or you know, the you're in the construction industry and you're working in Hong Kong, it's completely different from what we have in Singapore with our BCA green mark standards and the rest of it. It can be quite challenging to navigate. So from that perspective, what kind of timeline are you looking at in terms of when we could potentially see some kind of standardization or how can companies start to navigate this complex environment of different geographical standards when it comes to ESG and reporting? 
Yeah, so I think that's why technology platforms like ours play a role. You know, it's like, a, I would always like to use this analogy, your travel adapter. You know, just in Southeast Asia alone, if I am in Singapore and I go to Indonesia or if I travel to Thailand, you know, the next week, you will notice that all three countries utilize a different power socket, right? So what's really important is therefore the travel adapter. You know, the input is the same, the device is the same, but the travel adapter helps to convert you know, the requirements into what's needed locally. So, you know, the ESG data, as we just mentioned just now about your operational uh, data or your HR data, all of them will be common. You know, they will not be changed because of where you are. But when it comes to reporting to each country's standard, this could be therefore converted to the local country's requirement and satisfy the local country's thresholds and tiers. So I think that's the value of uh, te technology platforms like ourselves. So this partnership hopefully helps to bring this up, you know, across the region, okay, and drives greater adoption. Benjamin, why do companies need to be doing this? Well, I think there are two biggest reasons that I see right now. You know, number one is regulation. Uh, most countries in APEC, actually in the world, but just that here we are in APEC, you know, most countries here have already started to implement mandatory climate reporting starting from FY 2025. You know, so companies have no other uh, choice actually, especially if they are regulated in the sense that they are listed or they are large enough to fall under this regulation. So that's reason number one. And reason number two is actually linked to this, you know, so uh, as these companies are regulated and they are demanded to make these reports, they therefore have to receive data in their value chain. So many of them are starting to request for the same type of information from their supplier. So even if I wasn't a listed company, but I want to sell to a listed company or I want to sell to a global company, I find myself increasingly being required to submit some data or you know answer to their questionnaire. Right, that's where we see the value where you know a lot of different type of companies, large and small, are coming to us. And the main reason is that they have started to see that their clients are requesting for such information. Mm. And often when it comes to ESG reporting, it is seen as complex. Is it really as complex as many people think it is or for those that perhaps are just starting out on their journey? Mm, yeah, I mean, if I didn't know anything and I was just looking at the topic, you know, uh, it might seem overwhelming just because of the alphabetical soup. So I think help is on the way. The good news is initiatives like, you know, SAFE is meant to house uh, a regional approach where there could be local standards okay being interoperable with each other on a common platform so you know from the operate uh, operations perspective I, i'm just a simple company for example i even if i do not know how to convert the data okay into an esg report and if, and furthermore i do not know how to convert a singaporean esg report to a malaysian standard you know technology is there you know to help me so much so that i foresee that in the near term uh, ESG reporting is going to be like financial accounting. You know, I do not need to be an accountant to be able to use an accounting software or package to help me, you know, generate my uh, financial statements. So I think that's where we are getting towards, okay, whereby there is already now some form of standardization, there is already some form of regulation, just like financial accounting. Okay, and therefore there are already some software and solutions to, to drive, okay, the adoption of these reporting standards to become normal. What are some of the other trends that you're looking at or keeping an eye on when it comes to ESG reporting and disclosure? Again, just like the financial reporting market right now, financial data, right? We move beyond just reporting for the sake of reporting. Uh, financial data has now become valuable in the analytics. Uh, people are crunching data, trying to find you know, better value and making better investments. Uh, I think we're going to do the same in ESG data. So now we're still at a stage where you know, we are getting more and more companies to report. Uh, regulations are only kicking in 2025. But in the near term, we're talking about you know, three or five years down the road. This data will become uh, mature, will become readily available, and therefore there will be a whole world of analytics and you know, AI to be able to help companies and investors find value in where to invest. And if I was trying to map a scenario of how to be net zero by 2050, I will start picking my spots, right? I start picking which companies will be able to help me achieve that net zero goal. That was Benjamin So, founder and managing director of Stax ESGpedia. I'm Rachel Kelly. I'll be back with you next week for more eco news and views. 
Keep it with us here on Money FM 89.3.